All right, and viewers, now we are moving into our conversation this morning, and I am being joined on set by the chairman of the Tobago Division of the Toronto and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, and that is Mr. Curtis Williams. Good morning and welcome to you, sir. How are you doing? Good morning, Candice, and morning to your viewers and listeners and Tobago updates. All right, great. So now we're getting this conversation started off this morning about Carnival 2023. And if you paid attention to the Chamber's press conference last week, you would have heard nothing but rave reviews for the Tobago Carnival. So a week has passed by. Are we still sticking with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the events um, were successful. The, um, the promoters, even the, the vendors um, were much appreciative of the numbers. Um, they, they saw significant growth in, um, in their sales and um, they were all Please, and we know there are, there are opportunities for improvement as we move along. It's our second year in the carnival, and um, we definitely will have a post mortem. And um, and I, I spoke to the chief, um, the secretary for tourism before she left for the, um, her world travel market, and um, we definitely will have a meeting where we can bring stakeholders together and look at um, opportunities for improvement. But overall, the numbers speak um, volume, and the, the guys did well extremely well did we have any sort of spillover business coming out after the weekend and throughout the week last week into this weekend we we had few uh, we were looking at some sort of a cool down um session you know to again there may be visitors still on the island coming up and we need to have something continue so those things will pop up in our postmortem um so that i mean after the monday the tuesday then you just don't go dry and you know, you have to have something to carry them, especially those who want to relax a bit more on the island and enjoy probably some tours and all that good stuff that we have to offer. So it's something that we're looking forward to to, to speak about in that postmortem. And of course, this is a time that's pretty crucial in terms of the tourism industry because this is a time when we see more people on the island, more international visitors, which of course helps the business community and gives a boost to the business community. Are you seeing a difference this time around compared to last year and of all the previous years? Yeah, definitely. Um, we saw that upsurge in, uh, in the local um, visitors, domestic visitors um, from um, Trinidad. Um, the uptake on the international visitors, yes, there are opportunities there. Um, but the local visitors, we definitely saw that uptake in, in the local visitors. And the survey that um, the Division of Tourism did at the airport. Um, I don't know if anyone encountered them, but they are actually collecting data now uh, to assist them in going forward in terms of carnival and planning. And that's really, really great. I applaud them for doing such. Um, so they will have that data and will assist in the preparation for um, 2024 carnival. Certainly. Now, one of the things that you noted at last week's press conference was that it seems as though that events, tourism, um, might be the way to go, might, might be our way forward as we think about how we get the private sector going. Um, can you just uh, elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, we, we want to we wanna make the thing a package and, and not just only just the weekend. So maybe a couple of days um, prior to the carnival and after the carnival. So you have that continuous, maybe a two weeks of activities for the guests. And, um, and so we're looking forward to to get that calendar of, of events for that period. And also we want to talk about the entire year. So we're using Carnival as a, the, the, the kind of a springboard to push the activities going all the way, coming into October now, we're going to November, then we're going to December, and we're looking going all the way down to Easter. And let's, let's get a, a calendar of events going all the way and keep the momentum every month having something really meaningful going forward. And what, what kind of events are you seeing um, or would you like to see on that calendar? Like, what what would it look like for you guys that would bring people here more regularly? Well, we we, we want to sit with all the, 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 the stakeholders. We're talking about the, the different association and the book of folks. We want to stick with the, the heritage folks. And, and, and we want to sit with all these people because the planning stage is critical. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to wait until last minute because, as you know, most guests, when they do travel, they plan their travel way, way ahead. So we don't want to be caught um, out, you know, we want to make sure that we put the necessary things in place so that the, the visitors and them will know what's up, upcoming so they can plan accordingly. Because when you're planning a vacation, especially for foreigners, they don't do it like us who do last minute. They plan ahead. 
And um, so hence the reason why we ask that um, we meet as early as possible so that we can start to put things in preparation for 2024. So we have that launch early enough so that folks will know what's happening. They can start booking their flights and, and making all the necessary arrangements. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the potentials? What are the opportunities that came out of the Tobago Carnival for development in the private sector in terms of what additional services that we need to have on the island? Because I know a lot of things were oversubscribed. Like, for instance, the car rentals. Yeah, the definitely. Run out of cars. Yeah, and we, we noticed um, even accommodation. Um, mm -hmm. Folks have a tendency to push to more the villa type um, accommodation guest houses. Um, and we that was oversubscribed initially. Um, so we asked now maybe the opportunity for us to build out on, um, on accommodation, um, maybe the guest houses and, um, and villas. And so it would be a great opportunity to take some of the space we have. And, uh, and develop it into a product that we can really sustain ourselves with in terms of the individuals. So uh, the opportunity is there and then the banks are more than willing to lend you the funds because they see the, the way you're going to pay it back, so they see the return on it. So it's more, it, the more likely that they will be willing to assist you going forward with that. But we see that spillover for um, there was just that need for, um, for accommodation in that area mm -hmm. in terms of the villas and the, the, um, the smaller um, properties. And what other other additional services did you see that needed needed a bit more within our space? Well, but when we see definitely we see that the need for again transportation, moving folks from point A to point B, um, and we we mentioned it. Um, the, the the security forces did a tremendous job. Um, the routing of um of the the traffic, um, so the the secondary road behind the life and life there that that um road that that was built throughout the last carnival. That road played that essential part in, in moving the traffic out of Scarborough. Um, um, just we need some signage because a um, couple of um, visitors, when this, the, the police directed them off the, the main road, some of them got lost on the secondary road because they didn't know the route to go. Mm -hmm. So it's probably some kind of a direction as to where to go coming into Scarborough, leaving Scarborough if you're on the outskirts of Scarborough. Not everyone knows those secondary roads. So it would be good to get some kind of a um, signage, etc um going forward with that and then what are some of the other things that you would like to see put in place for next year's carnival so we already have the dates so that 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 part is good but what else do we need well we should look um closely um, um we, we, we 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 saw that um caribbean airline um did assist us with flights coming down to the late half um we want to know if these things could be a little earlier so that we can take full advantage of it um, we're talking about the, uh, <clears throat> the partnering with our local promoters and band, band leaders. Um, they, they will need some assistance. So we're asking that um, somewhere within the tourism division, they can assist them in planning their product so you have a better product offering. Um, so that um, so some sort of workshop leading up to Carnival and not just only just the day or the week. So that we can invite some of these band leaders, even some of the promoters, to, to ensure that your product that you're offering or the services you're offering to the to the visitors is of a quality. So we we keep raising the bar, I know, as we move along. And um and that's important. So we just don't wait until you know that particular month, but throughout the year we can run workshops on, on these things and which which will be really beneficial for the promoters and the band leaders. Now one of the things that you also mentioned was the support that you might be getting from the financial sector and i know that's been a challenge for a very long time in terms of how do you grow your business when you're not able to get that support from the financial services um what what is what's the conversation like right now with them after something as successful as carnival well as you know all those financial institutions looking at their their, um, their lending and and and, their, and the criteria etc but um they're slowly coming on board um uh, we see um, one of our major commercial banks is doing a lot of in, in initiatives. That's Republic Bank, and um, we see um, um, FCB following through with it, and RBC right on their back coming up with some in innovative ways to assist small business. And we applaud that effort, and we, we ask them to continue with that. I know that effort in assisting the small business, the SMEs, they, they need the assistance most, and, um, and these packages are geared towards them. And um, we just ask them to continue that process, moving it up, upward trend. And then in terms of 
you know, the, the, the support? What, other, what types of support does the private sector right now need to make that, that push? Well, what we, we, what we decided at the Chamber, um, which was a couple months ago, our business development committee um, and decided that, hey, we need to do something for, for the Tobago business because we realized that there are a lot of business on the island that's struggling <clears throat> a lot. So we, we came up with this idea of, um, of form getting a, a business um, advisory desk. Um, and that desk will offer the services that most of our business need in, on the island. Mm -hmm. um, could assist you in your marketing, could assist you with the registration of your, of your business to get your financials together, to get um, your whole marketing team and, and moving your product from where it is to another stage. Um, so that business advisory services will be soon launched and that will assist the local, I'm talking about the small man, the, the mechanics, the, the, the self-employed mechanic who want to move his business up to being a, 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 a limited, and all the hairdressers, the barber, maybe the, uh, the, the mini marts, and all these people who are self-employed. You may have people who, who is good in, in computers and, and they may want to scale up the business to, to get on the market to do web design and, and graphics. And all these guys are very skilled and want to size up their, their business for moving from just a sole trader to a business itself, a limited liability. And we are asking you to come, come visit us at the chamber because we can really gear you or push you into the right part of moving that business to the next level. Mm -hmm. And then we, I know that there's a meeting scheduled also, I think it's on the 17th, with yeah. the Minister of Trade and Industry. Can you share with us, you know, what are you hoping for to come out of that meeting next week? Right. So what that, what we were looking forward to is that um, we have a lot of manufacturing on, on island, um, small manufacturers. Um, and um, even speaking with a couple of the, um, the, the exports, and we are laboring these problems because some of us, all our sweets, we want to export these sweets, but we have challenges with our laboring. We have challenges with testing and um, getting product tested and getting it to market. And um, so we are trying to get the minister across here to, to understand what's happening on, in the Tobago space. It's a little different from Trinidad, right? And um, these folks need as, as much assistance as possible to move that product into the international market. And um, so we know that they have a lot of cutters industry, folks who do pepper sauce, mm -hmm. um, benebos, tambran, and other um, indigenous um, real good stuff in Tobago. And we, we asking them to come out to, uh, on, on that day that, that they can speak to Export TT, they can speak to the Manufacturing Association and other folks that might be there that we want to bring in the Exim Bank. you trying to seek um, US and you know, you're trying to get, because you need the raw material. And they need to purchase the raw material, but there's, there's no there's limited U.S. currency around. So Exim Bank will be there to assist you. So at least you can get your raw materials. Um, you don't have to rely on the hundred dollars that the bank going to give you or don't give you, as the case may be. Um, so we are asking you to come out and, and see us, call us at the chamber, and we will be able to arrange that, and you'll be there as part of that team going forward to assist this small business in Tobago. The big guys already have it packed down, but the small business, all those operating in the in the east of Tobago, the rural areas, that they are need assistance, they need that push, they need that support. And we at the chamber, here at the Tobago Division, we are willing to assist you. You don't have to be a member. Once you're into business and you're doing this product, or you have a product and you want to scale it up, you want to make the thing more marketable, come and see us. We will be able to assist you going forward. And then in terms of, um, as you mentioned, XM Bank and accessing foreign exchange and so on, What's been the conversation now? We, we heard from the budget that um, there was going to be a facility for the SMEs and so on going forward to access foreign exchange um, aside from through credit cards and so on in the banks. Have you, has there been any conversation with the chamber and the business sector to make, towards making that happen? Well, um, the last message or the last information we got from the ministry that that program is not 100% rule out as yet. So we're still awaiting the, the details of such program. In the meantime, Exim Bank is willing to assist our, our suppliers, our, um, our manufacturers here mm -hmm. on island um, in, in terms of getting um, U.S. currency to purchase raw material. So um, on that particular day, as I indicated, uh, it will be all exciting for all those business-minded entrepreneurs, all those light manufacturers across the island, um, even those who want to do fish, and um, exporting the fish, that's the, the smoked fish and all the other products, and you're, you're getting a bit of challenges with it. Um, we are asking you to come out to that, on that meeting, and, and let's see how best we can get to be a small manufacturing up and running.
And then how can all of this come together in time for Carnival next year? Like, you know, it's, it's I, I, I just want get, to get the vision and what's the thinking of you guys at this point in time as you look ahead? Well, we, we, we really want to ramp up our, um, our business awareness for the, the Tobago space. Even though you're not a member, you'll see the, 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 the benefits of being a member of the Tobago division. And um, you, you can come and, and we will assist you. We, we will hold your hand going through the process. Um, so it shouldn't be something, it won't be something difficult for you at all. So we we'll just ramp it up as we go along. Uh, we know Christmas is around the corner and then as soon as Christmas ends, there's, there, there can definitely is going to be 2024 where we're going to move into that new year. And, um, and we're hoping that it's going to be an exciting year for us. We look forward to a lot. Um, I was writing my end of year um, review mm -hmm. for our contact magazine. And there are a couple of things that I noted. Um, <clears throat> and one of the, the biggest things that I noted that is, um, is we are tracking the international visitors, um, direct flights uh, coming into the island and, and even um, um, investors coming in to do some investment here. I know the, um, the chief said give us the Tobago development plan to look at. So we're looking at it, we're reviewing it because we're hoping that there's going to be a meeting soon that we could discuss the development of Scarborough going forward with the executive and, and his team. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Mr. Williams. So please don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Update. Viewers, we are continuing our conversations this morning with the chairman of the Tobago Division of the uh, Toronto Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Mr. Curtis Williams, as we discuss what's happening with business in Tobago. Now, um, we were speaking a little bit about the Tobago Carnival and how did that go, but we're moving now on into Christmas. And additionally, along with, with Christmas, um, we are expecting over 70 cruise ships to come into Scarborough. Yeah. Yeah. And what is the preparation like from the business community in anticipation of that? And Candice, and, and, and thanks for bringing that um, to the fore because um, this was something that we wanted to discuss. Um, we know that um, we want to meet probably with the Taxi uh, Association, Taxi mm -hmm. Drivers and Maxi Taxi Drivers Association because one of the major challenges the, the, the island do have around that time is transportation. The visitors don't have, they, they're not sufficient vehicles on island to take the visitors to places of interest. So then, then you have all these P cars and all unauthorized cars trying to move visitors. And that's where we see that, that definitely there could be a problem there, Candice. Now, the fact is that <clears throat> when you have these international visitors, these relevant cars don't have the insurance, the appropriate insurance to cover them. So if something happens, remember you're taking a P car, to mm -hmm. take a tourist or a guest to a destination uh, and god forbid there's an accident or something of that nature your private vehicle insurance will not cover that that visitor all right and then you know they're going to be a fallout mm -hmm. so hence the reason why we ask in the maxi taxis association the taxis association to scale up and um, get ready and prepare for for the the, bump, the bumper to um cruise ship season that we have coming and um and and don't let the, the 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 other cars i mean because of the demand and we need to move the visitors hence the reason why they, it's it's spill over into the p cars but if the p cars is not registered or licensed or insured for such purpose can you could see the problem we will, we will encounter if god forbid something happens and it's not going to be a simple issue it would be an issue that has international implications that's correct candace mm -hmm. and um i've been exposed to the cruise ship um industry for quite some time. I worked with Disney Cruise Line for approximately six years. So I can tell you, Candice, it's not an easy task. So when you have an international visitor and, and there's, there's an accident or incident, as the case may be, Candice, that goes a long way, a very, very much long way. So we had to prepare for these kind of things. We have to have our, our um, the TRHA, our health services have to be on our alert. We have to have the a and &E department and, and all the relevant the ambulances Definitely, we, you can't have any issues. So when a cruise ship is in port, there are certain things definitely have to be in motion. Why is that that ship with probably two, three thousand guests there? Because that have long reaching effect on us if we don't manage it properly. Mm -hmm. It's a nice thing, but if we don't manage it properly, it have that effect. 
Now, one of the things the Chief Secretary mentioned last week is that Scarborough businesses need to also step up their game and prepare for when the cruise ship arrives. Now, of course, we're still awaiting the schedule of all the cruise ships because I think there are still one or two more cruise ships to be added on to the list. But, um, you know, have you been speaking with your members, especially those based in Scarborough, to see how we can all work together towards making sure that when visitors come off the cruise ships, they have a very good experience and, of course, how the business community wins? Yeah, definitely, Candice, and, and, and hence the reason why we, we were waiting for that, that long-lasting meeting with the Secretary for Tourism. And it's a pity that she, she on the World Travel Market because we want to make sure that the division is prepared for these folks in terms of... Um, Scarborough being open, um, vendors being prepared and, and, and waiting uh, for the arrival of these ships. We're still waiting on the, uh, the, the itinerary in terms of the co different calls. But when we see calls up in Charleville, we know Charleville had numerous calls. Yes. And um, we want to make sure that they, they adequate transportation to take these guests on, 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 on events around, you know, that we may put in place for them. Um, so it's important, very, very much important that we sit as stakeholders and plan accordingly going forward. And we don't do two, two things in isolation. So the, the maxi taxi drivers doing the thing by themselves, the, the vendors doing things by themselves, and the other business doing things. We want to put everything together, it comes up with a real nice plan for that whole strip in Scarborough and is, is welcoming for the guests. So when they do come, there are stores open and there are vendors there to sell products and so forth as we move forward. Yeah. And then what are the opportunities that are there for those people who may not yet be established in Scarborough? Well, yeah, we want to work on that. Um, there, there may be pop-up, folks may come and do pop-up shops and we want to manage the thing, the, the, um, the Esplanade. I know there's a company there that, that, that manage the Esplanade. So we want to meet with these folks so that we, everything becomes a bit seamless and we don't have issues going forward. Um, we know that, um, you could imagine, Candice, that um, if one of these ships do come in for the carnival. Hmm. So we do for the Tobago Carnival, you have a, one of these ships outside there with about two or three thousand guests. And we have um half of them playing in 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 the bands in Tobago. That would be such an amazing thing. I hope the secretary talks about that when when they're up there in, in, in the UK. So that would be so good for us in, in, in Tobago. Just having the ships there during that carnival period. So it's something that she could probably market to them going forward. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Um and I mean we're waiting well. Definitely waiting to see what, what comes out of it yeah. and see if we can make that happen. Um, but looking at the Tobago business sector in general, we've had quite a lot of complaints um, over the past year or so that, of course, the economy has not been doing so well. But what is your, your take on um, just the state of things as it is right now and then looking ahead in, let's say, the next six months or so? I mean, what's your evaluation on Tobago's economy? Well, Candice, what we, what we have to look at is the spend in Tobago. Um, if the spend is not happening, if, if, if commerce is not happening in Tobago, then the trickle-along effect, that's when the, the normal man on the street would not, would not get anything. Um, so hence the reason why we're looking for the spend to be Tobago-centric. Um, I'm not so much Trinidad. So when we have spend, especially for events and other things, we, we're hoping that we have the vendors, we're hoping that you use service support personnel providers from the space so that that ripple, that ripple effect of spend will trickle down to the average Tobagonian and the taxi drivers and all the other people who depend on, on, on the space. So because if you have the spend from outside Tobago now, mm -hmm. that fund will be going straight to where that is, maybe Trinidad or elsewhere. So that money invested in, 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 in even Carnival and all the other promotions that don't really stay here, it, it then be exported. So it's, it's, it's important for us to understand the man on the streets to understand how this thing works. The money injected into Carnival, the 12 million, 13 million dollars. If that money is not spent here in Tobago, and half of it has been exported in terms of some big guy come and take all and he going back to that with all his money, then there's no, there's the, so we don't see the effect, the, the ripple effect from that spend. So it's important that we use some of the local um, vendors, suppliers, um, and in, in as much as possible. We know that we might not have enough um, equipment and suppliers and etc throughout the spend but as much as possible let's see how much of that spend could we really spend in Tobago. Hence the reason why you see some of them were and a lot of people were, were damned about the um the contractors coming from Trinidad. Yes. It's the same thing Candice. If the spend don't happen to uh, within the our space there is that that trickle down effect 
don't don't occur. And it's important that we look at that that when we're doing having projects and etc., that we use more more of our local content in, in such. And is that spend happening? And I'm not just speaking about carnival, but I'm speaking about just in general, whether it's an event or whether it's a, I don't know a, a conference, whatever the case may be. Is that spend happening in Tobago enough where it's causing or it's helping the private sector in terms of growing and so on? And and that and you you're correct. And, and when we look around the landscape, we're not seeing enough of that. Um, we look at the airport project. Um, how much do we see the trucks? All the trucks from Trinidad. So we, you know, I mean, I don't know to be have the capacity, but most of the trucks is from Trinidad. I, I look at the trucks every day, and um, we've seen some of the. So that spend, I mean, that project is a huge project. And um, when I look at some of the folks working on the project as well, I'm looking for the Tobago guys. I hardly seen them, and um, so we want to know that spend. So when you have all these major and large projects on island, we're hoping that the local contractors the local um, and the artisans and all these other people get some sort of you know work within that space if they don't then they spend gone can mm -hmm. this we, we, that airport may cost us let's say for instance 500 million dollars and no part of that will be circulated around us and because these guys when they get most of their accounts in Trinidad direct and, and you know there's nothing happening in this space but you can imagine if you had the local guy here, the truck drivers and all the different vendors and all the suppliers, and then you're pulling materials from it. So we have a nice spend going on in that space. It will, rip, it will do a lot well for us. Now, during last week's reprioritizing of the budget, when the THA, the Executive Council, went into retreat and came out of it, they mentioned that they, they want to improve the construction that's that's been happening, ramp it up. Because, of course, we know there was not that much construction happening over the past year or so. Um, and one of that is through the housing projects. They announced a couple of housing projects for which they want to partner with the private sector. Has that conversation happened yet with any of your members? Are you aware of that? Well, I had the conversation with the banks. Um, and one of the things that they mentioned is that the THA uh, must live up to their, um, their agreement. Um, because remember, when you go into that partnership with the THA, um, you expect that um, at the completion of the of the houses that the funds, you know, being moved. But um, if the if the funds is not moving on a timely basis, you could understand what would happen there. So you you're asking us to to partner with you, and we definitely would need the assistance of the bank in in that process. And um, so when we do get that letter from you indicating that yes, you own back us, etc. That fancy, beautiful letter, mm -hmm. and we take to the bank, and the bank said, "Okay, okay, Mr. Williams, you're looking good. We can allow you um, ten million dollars to go ahead with the project." At the at the end of it, now when the teacher now have to pay us, now we just want to make sure that that is done in a timely manner. So you just don't give promises on paper, and you don't live up to it. Mm -hmm. Now, how much of our local contractors have the capacity to do those kind of things? That's the next thing. We can't ramp up the thing so high that it it it, it passed the level. Or the, the, media, the, the, the affordability of the local contractors. So we probably have to divide the thing into smaller packages. So it, you know, it meets our, our, our appetite. Because if it's huge, then we, we expect the Toronto contractors will come and take, take the project because there's no way the local ones would be able to, because it's way out of its, its, its scope. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that you, you put the package in a manner that the local guys, whether it's a, um, probably 15 houses, at um, six hundred thousand dollars a house, or something of that nature, so that it is able to meet the appetite of the local contractors going forward. But are you hopeful? Well, I am um, again. Um, uh, the chief sex spoke a lot, and um, and we definitely will will will, will hold him to that. Um, mm -hmm. And and his executive um, definitely. I know now he's in in London um, and doing his bit up there. Um, we will see the reward of that. Hopefully next year, you know, because you know when you plan this year, it's all for next year. Not now you're going to see that for this winter. It's going to be for next year. So we're hoping that we get some more direct flights and we're hoping that all that conversation. So that spend that goes into the world travel market, we're hoping to see the, the, the reward of that spend. Um, we know we have a lot of hotelers up there and, and other business um, initiatives going forward. You know, the tour guides and all of them there with them. And we're hoping that that brings that direct flight is a direct flight candidate you can imagine these jets coming in i remember the times because i work around the airport yes. when i have when we had probably had candidates at one time when, when these flights land on the evening 
we had over five, 600 folks coming off these planes and the airport was filled to capacity to the spillover people on the runway trying to get into immigration. Uh, even checking in process, I remember all on the sidewalks you know, to check in. It, Candace, it was a real bumper time. And we're hoping that those times could come back with those direct flights coming in and um, not, not leaving flights alone, but we're looking for investment too. We want money to come in too, right? We want, we want dollars to come in. So we, we're hoping that the conversation move from direct flights and move into direct investment because we need the investment on the island. Mm -hmm. So we need some of the, the bigger guys to, to open up the market and get the investment because the Scarborough project, it's no way we're going to get that sponsored by central government. We know that, Candice. I think the Prime Minister made that clear on Sunday. Well, <laughs> so we definitely have to get some sort of investment coming forward. So mm -hmm. we're asking the Chief Sec, um, as soon as we finish with the document, um, his team, his executive, will definitely meet with us and we will start the conversation of getting that direct foreign investment in the island to do those huge development projects. All right. Now, in the last few minutes that we have, I want to spend all the time talking about the gala awards yeah. hosted by the chamber. Yeah. So uh, there, out of that, there was one Tobago entrepreneur that won um, what's it, Entrepreneur of the Year, yeah. and that was Tobago Gold Rum. Yeah, Tobago Gold Rum. It was really, really exciting. Um, that was a real gala event. Uh, I, I felt proud to know that um, Tobago, um, just the name Tobago, it, it really, you know, made me wonder and said, wow, you know, we'd be there. And, and, and this um, guy won Entrepreneur of the Year. I mean, he's a really, really good guy. And, um, and the product that he have is really, it's a really tasty product coming for the Christmas. I can imagine he out of supplies for it, but he have a great team. He have an excellent marketing team. Um, being, a, um, having this foreign, you know, touch around there with all the different marketing folks in different parts of the world, he was able to market that product and he did it well. He did it extremely, extremely well. And we are proud of him. And, and Tobago um, Gold Chocolate Rum Cream is really nice. And I wish we could try it. I think our Mandos have it, Penny Seavers have it. We can get it. Yeah, it's actually it, on the it. grocery shelves. I mean, I'm not too sure if people have noticed it. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it's a very nice taste to rum. It's really, I really, mean, really. I think you can give Bailey's a, a, a bit of competition there. <laughs> Certainly. And you're getting that natural chocolate flavor. Which is it, what it's based on. It's based yes, on yes. that to be. You're not getting that artificial flavor. You're getting that natural. If you normally drink cocoa tea, right? You're getting that, that cocoa natural tea, chocolate tea. Chocolate tea. <laughs> yeah, yes. chocolate tea. You're getting that natural flavor. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really, 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 really good. And I think we should try it. And I'm, I'm proud of him. And they did well. Trevor Lynch, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He was a, a great guy coming out from South. And um, he was one of our inductees in the Hall of Fame. So the event was well taken care of. We had over 30 representative from Tobago business folks down there. Mm -hmm. It's the largest folks we ever had going down to any single event for, for the Chamber in Trinidad. And I want to say thanks for the business in Tobago who supported us going forward in, in such an event. Um, the executive of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber was so impressed with um, the turnout from the Tobago um, arm of the, of, the, of the Chamber. And I want us going forward with that kind of strength and unity moving forward. Tell me about those businesses that were represented there. Yeah. Well, we, we had, um, we had um, all, all sectors, they were there to see um, the, 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 whole, um, the whole excitement and the build up to the, the business of Chimba. Because we were hoping that one day, even we look at it, we could have more, more um, nominees coming out of Tobago mm -hmm. and we could have some more awards on, uh, going forward. So we're thinking about it, we, we have it as our conversation going forward and we're hoping that we could really put some more um, emphasis on getting some of our entrepreneurs here on the island because we have a lot of entrepreneurs working very, very hard and we don't recognize them. Mm -hmm. So we need to recognize the people who work very, very hard here, um, who are members of the chamber and we, through this um, Champion of Business Award, recognize them going forward. And um, is there any of our businesses that you're seeing right now that you could pinpoint that are doing remarkably well? Well, we have folks operating in the sector of um, of um, innovative, and um, we're looking some budding engine, um, budding business in tech that we've seen coming forward. Um, we don't want to call the name yet, <laughs> but we've seen some other budding tech business going forward, and um, I'm so excited to see how these guys um, build out their, their business. It's amazing to see how the tech, you know, it's it's not it's not an easy task to, to run a tech a tech company, but I see some of our tech companies doing really really good, and I'm I'm happy and I embrace technology, and I look forward to them, you know, getting some award. I remember. Um, last couple of days at IDB, IDB, I was there at, during the judging, 
<laughs> for the competition for some grants going forward. And uh, we had the, the THA, the Tobago Literacy Unit, represented there. They were one of the, the, one of the folks who was the finalist in that event. And it was amazing when I, when I heard the pitch from the Tobago end. My God, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. I was totally blown away. And so we have good things happening here. We have good people in Tobago. It's just that we don't recognize them, Candice. So we need to, to, these folks to be recognized on the domestic and the international stage. And you've spoken quite a lot about, you know, what the chamber is doing to help businesses and so on. But for those who are looking on and hearing these plans, how can they get connected? What do they need to do to get connected? Well, Candice is quite simple. They can visit our office at Ansel McCall Building on Milford Road. That's where Standard looks to be. We are upstairs, beautiful office. And they, or they can give us a call on 639-2669. And uh, we'll definitely be there, answer the phone, and we'll definitely get, on, get in touch with you and, and move it forward. Because Candice, our aim is to ramp up our membership, and we're always looking for that, that micro business. Candice, the big ones, yes, but Tobago have their small business, and we want those folks there. We want those folks to assist them. So don't stay there and suffer. You're having low sales, you're having marketing challenges, you want to work for the THA and you don't know how to you know, work for the THA, um, or you want to get your business all structured because it's all over the place, you're accounting, you're probably putting in a shoebox and you want to make sure the thing look good because to get financing from the bank or any financial institution, they need to display your account in a particular manner. You can't appear an accountant because that's costly, so we tell you, come to the chamber, we can assist you, we have our accountants on board who can assist you with, with meaner fees. And also, um, even the whole marketing strategy, we can assist you with that as well. So we're looking forward to you coming on, on board. Yeah. All right, great. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Williams, for being on with us this morning and for talking to us about, you know, what's been going on in the business yeah. sector as we try to move to bigger forward. Yeah, that's good. And thanks again for having me. Take care. All right. Well, viewers, thank you for joining us. And I hope you have a safe and wonderful day. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Thousand people strong and the vibes is never